What's up creator, I'm Josh, and I want you to be able to start creating amazing stuff in Sogni without being held back by a learning curve. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go over the whole interface in this tutorial so that you know what all of the different buttons do, and then you can either jump in and start playing with it yourself, or you can check out our other tutorials on prompting, on models, and so on. Personally, I love creating in Sogni, and I think you're gonna love it too, so check this out. When you first open up Sogni, this is the interface you're gonna see. We have our main generations panel here. That's where most of the screen real estate is. On the left-hand side, we have our controls panel. This is where we're gonna dial in our settings as we are generating images. And then along the top, we have some more settings, which we will get into later. Moving to the top of our controls panel, we have our main prompt. This is the default prompt that we have right here. This is where we're gonna put in the main content of the image that we want to generate. And if you have questions of how to prompt, then we do have a dedicated tutorial on prompting, but also you can just click this question mark and you'll see these in multiple different places on the interface to get a lot more information on whatever interface item that you're looking at. So in this case, we have tons of good information on how to prompt in Stable Diffusion. Let's minimize that. Under our main prompt, we can see what our style is. So we see intricate details, breathtaking, amazing, and award-winning. That is being pulled from our style prompt, which is down here. And this is where will you put in the style of the image that you wanna generate. So we have the content in the main prompt and we have the style in the style prompt. The reason those are separated is if you already know what style of image you wanna generate and you're just dialing in the content, you can leave the style prompt alone and only mess with the main prompt. And vice versa, if you know what the content is you wanna generate and you're just playing around with the different styles, then you just change the style prompt. Let's close that for now and go back up to our Imagine button, which starts our generations. Right now we see a one on the Imagine button, which is a reference to the number of images that we'll generate, which you can change right here from one to four to nine to 16. Right above the numbers that you're generating, we see three different options here, and this is the style of rendering we're gonna do. Let's hover our mouse over it for a second and we'll get a tool tip, which tells us what it does. Right now we're using on device processing. So that means that my computer itself is gonna be doing the work, which is great because it's free. The next one is our relaxed supernet. If we click that and we can click connect, now we are connected to our supernet. The relaxed supernet is the one that is community driven. So we can contribute our own computing power to it and earn some Sogni tokens. Or for now, test Sogni tokens while we're still on testnet. Then we have our fast supernet. So if you want to generate images as fast as possible, you want to generate images in seconds, then this is the one that you use. To the right of those, we see how many test Sogni it's going to cost to do our generations. You may notice that it's half the cost if we use the community driven network compared to if we use the fast supernet. Now, right now we are using test Sogni. So these are all free while we're still on testnet. But if we click this, we can see how much it would cost if we were using actual Sogni tokens, or we can click back and switch back to the number of Sogni tokens for the generation. To the right of the cost, we have this little eye where we can open up and get a summary of our account. We can see how many test Sogni I have. We can see my account name. We can see the leaderboards, all of this. Right now I'm ranked 10, which means I need to step it up and start generating some more stuff. You may also notice that we have some of the same icons in our summary and on the top bar. So we have the same rewards claim button and we have our account button over here, which we'll get into in a bit. And you can see the history of what we've been generating right in here. Let's close that out and move down to our model. Right now we're using the Sogni XL Alpha 2 model, which we can open up our model explorer and view. The Sogni XL model is a really nice, well-rounded model that's good for creating both artistic images, but it can also create photorealistic images. And if you find an image that you like, you can click this eye down here and it will give you all of the in information that was used to generate it. So we have the prompt, the style, the avoid, all of these settings that were used to generate this image. You can of course click the magnifying glass to get a bigger view of it. And we have this button to restore all settings, which gives us a really nice starting point for our generations. Before I close this, I just wanna reiterate that there's question marks here that you can always click on to get more information. Additionally, sometimes you'll see more than one model down here. Right now, this is the only one available. And you'll also notice that there's this green icon for our supernet with 21 next to it, which tells us that right now we're connected to supernet and there are 21 computers currently supporting this model, which is excellent because we can generate up to 16 at a time. And by having 21 computers supporting it, that means we will be able to generate the full 16. If this number is less than 16, then you can't generate as many at a time. If we want to look at all the other models, there are a ton of them here. We do have a dedicated video on models. So I'm not going to go into detail on these in this video, but just know that you can explore them all throughout there. Now let's close our model explorer. And we have a couple more things to cover in our style prompt. I mentioned this is where you're going to put in the style of image that you're going to be generating. And in this case, since I restored all of the settings from this owl generation, we now have the style prompt that was used to generate it. We also have this drop down where you can choose from many, many different styles, all kinds in photography and film and camera angles and art periods. So you can choose whatever kind that you want based upon that. For example, if I wanted to do more continuous work with this owl, I could just stick with the prompt that it went with 
Or if I wanted to, I could scroll down and I could choose photography, action, wildlife, and I'll end up getting a different type of image. Now let's close our style prompt and go down to our avoid prompt, which is also our negative prompt. And this is where we're going to put in things that we don't want. Right now we have kind of a default negative or avoid prompt, which is a really good starting point. But again, if we click the question mark, you get lots of really good information. Here's the default negative prompt right here. If we want to do realistic images, we can copy these since this is what we're doing. Let's copy those and I'm going to add a comma and paste them in just to add to my avoid prompt. And now now that one's good to go. And I'll largely just leave the avoid prompt alone unless I see something popping up in my images that I specifically don't want. And I'll add whatever that thing is to the avoid prompt so that I don't see it anymore. Next is our seed. And our seed is really easy to understand because the way Stable Diffusion generates these images is it starts with an image that's pure noise. It's basically just a bunch of random pixels of different colors. And then it will go through a series of steps iterating each time to go from an image of complete noise to the final image. Now, because I'm using the same seed, if I did this again, I'm going to get exactly the same image. And the reason why is because if we have all of the same settings and we generate again, we're going to get the exact same image. But if we started with a different seed, let's choose a random seed and generate one more time you'll see that we get a totally different image. And that leads me into the next part of our interface, which is our steps and our guidance. And the number of steps is really easy. It's just the number of iterations it goes through from the image of pure noise to the final image. And what we generally want to do with steps is get to the minimum number of steps where we still get the image that we want. Let's see what kind of image we can get with only 15 steps. So we can see that our quality did go down just a little bit. So I think we'd be a little bit better, maybe closer to let's try 20 steps. And I'm going to unrandomize the seed so that we're going to get almost an identical image and then we can get a better comparison. And the reason we want to get the minimum number of steps to get to where we want to be is simply just because it's going to be less expensive. So right now we can see with 20 steps, this is 1.05 test Sogni. But as we do more steps, it's more computation, which is going to cost more. So if I take it all the way up to 150 steps, now it's 7.55 Sogni, over seven times as much Sogni. Now let's imagine again. And what we'll probably find is that we're going to have largely the same image because essentially what it's doing is it gets the image to where it needs to be, but then it just keeps generating. And it's kind of like you're just painting a painting with the same colors over and the painting's done, just put the paintbrush down because the painting's done. And we're going to get basically the same image with 150 steps that we got with 20 steps. So let's bring this back down. I'm going to bring the number of steps down. Let's do let's do 25. We'll go a little bit more than what I initially chose. And then we'll get into guidance and guidance is how closely you want the model to follow your instructions, your prompt. But it has a couple other things that kind of happen as you increase and decrease the guidance. So if I decrease the guidance all the way to one, I'm giving the model more creative flexibility to kind of do what it wants. But what's going to also happen is I'm going to get an image that is less saturated, it's less contrasty and will just be kind of more flat looking. And in this case, it kind of looks like we have like a stuffed animal of an owl. So one guidance is too low. Now for photorealistic images, I typically will keep the guidance below five or so. I think four would probably give us a really nice image. That's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click add here at the top to add it to my gallery, which I'll show you later. And I'm going to also randomize the seed so that each time I generate, we see something different. Now, before we move on to guidance, I also want to point out that sometimes we want to have images that are more contrasty and more saturated. Let's say if we wanted to do a cartoon image. So if I went back up to my style and I changed it from action wildlife to cartoon, but then I also need to go into my avoid prompt and take out all of these because I actually do want those in my image. So then I'll minimize that and let's generate again. And with the guidance of 10, we're getting an image that's much more cartoony. If we turned all the way up, I want to show you what happens when you have too much guidance so that you can recognize it when you see it in your own images. When we have too much guidance, you'll start to get colors that are a lot more neon looking, a lot more white, and then you'll get this posturization effect. Everything gets kind of blown out and you'll lose details. So I don't want that. I'm going to bring my guidance back down to, let's say, eight and a half. So that's better. We're still getting a cartoony look, but we also are getting more details in there. This is a nice looking one. Let's add that to our gallery. In fact, I really like this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it and drag it down for it to be our guide image. Once we've selected our guide image, we'll see a couple things will happen. We have our guide button at the top turns green, which shows us that we have an active guide image, which you can deselect and it removes it from down here or you can click it again and it will add it. Same thing as I did when I clicked and dragged it over. And now that we're working in a guide image, let's go ahead and make this bar a little bit wider. Our controls panel, we can expand it so that I can see the guide image a little bit better. Now below our guide image, we can see the strength and this is how closely I want the next image to look like the old one. So if I take it all the way up to 96, I'm gonna generate basically the exact same image. But if I take it all the way down to five and we make sure that our seed is random and we imagine, we're getting largely the same image, but it is a little bit different. 
Similarly, if I turn the strength up, and I'm gonna actually turn the guidance down just a little bit more. These colors are still just a little bit more saturated for my liking. And imagine once more. There, I like that. So we have a little bit of a different look. It does have a little bit of a flat style to it. I'm gonna add it to my gallery. Now there's something else I wanna point out with the guide image and it relates to steps. So if we don't have a guide image, we can see we have 25 steps is what it goes to. As soon as I add a guide image, now it says 13 steps. The reason why is it's basically doing a similar number of steps, but what the strength percentage shows, right now it's at 25%, is that I'm starting 25% of the way done. So it brings the number of steps down. And if I move it up to 50%, now we're only at 12 steps. And if I move it all the way up to 96%, it's only one step. Using a guide image is useful because A, you can have more control over whatever you're generating, but it also costs less because you're kind of giving the model a head start or a little boost. Now there are a couple other settings with a guide image that I'm not gonna go into in detail, but just so that you know what they are, the trash can gets rid of the guide image. The folder allows you to open up an image from your computer to do it. Now, if we do have a guide image, we have a camera controls button that opens up and this gives us more fine tuned control over a couple other settings. We can zoom into our image or zoom out of our image. You can rotate it however you want and you can move it up and down or left and right there. Now let's close those and exit out of having a guide image and I'm gonna move the bar back over to where it was. Let's minimize our guide image and our last setting in the main bar is our control net. And there's a lot to using control net, which we weren't, aren't gonna get into in this video. We are gonna have multiple tutorial videos on the different kinds of control net. So I'm not gonna cover those in this video, but this is where you'll access them and go through the settings. Let's minimize control net and go down to our advanced settings. At the top, we have our preview count. So right now this is showing five, which means it's going to show me five images as it's generating and you can turn this up as high as you want but what's going to happen is if you turn it up to where you're getting more previews during the generation process it, it's just more computation that the system has to do and so it's just going to slow down your generations a bit i find five works out pretty well for me i can still see the generations as it's happening so if we generate again this way we can kind of see a handful of images as it's generating so we have one there one there and sometimes if it generates quickly it's not going to show you as many as what it says it'll show you which is great because if it generates faster all the more power to it next we have our auto upscaling so if you want to upscale your images to a larger size automatically every time you can select that here i'll show you the upscaler in a bit then we have our scheduler. This is essentially the different algorithms you can choose from on how it goes through the process of what's called diffusion when it goes from the noisy image to the final image. I'm not gonna go into details on the scheduler right now, but uh, if you want, you can always click the question mark and get more information on it. Let's minimize that and go down to our processing type. Now, if we are doing on-device processing, let's turn that on. We can choose whether or not we're going to be using our CPU, GPU, our CPU and neural engine or our CPU, GPU and neural engine. So depending on the device that we're using and depending on the model you're using, there are different ways of generating. So now that we have switched to on-device processing and our model has been loaded, now we can choose it right here. Doing these generations uses a lot of RAM. If you have less than 32 gigabytes of RAM, then you're definitely gonna wanna have the memory usage optimized. Now let's minimize processing and go down to our safe content filter, which is pretty straightforward. We're gonna leave it on for now and let's close our advanced settings. Now, moving up to the top bar, we can minimize our controls panel right there. Then we can toggle animation mode on or off, which will be generating many different images to create a full on animation. We're not gonna get into animations right now. We'll do it in a future video, but just so you know that it's here. Now, going across the top, I mentioned you can toggle on the guide image on or off. Right now, control net and canvas are grayed out because of the model I'm using. And that is because I'm using an Excel model. If I go back to view all models, and if we go over to view models that are compatible with control net with this control net icon, you'll notice it's the same icon here and here for control net, which is also the same icon right here. These are the models that are compatible with control net. So if I switched over to Soggy Artist and choose it, then close that out. Now we have option to send the image to control net similarly to how we did it with the guide image. And we can also open up canvas mode. And what canvas mode does is allows you to expand your image in other directions. Again, I'll have a dedicated video on canvas mode, so I'm not gonna go into it right now. But other than canvas, let's exit and discard. Other than canvas, we can mask. So if I decided I wanted to change this eyeball to a different color on my owl, I could mask it and then I could change my prompt to do that. Again, I'll have another tutorial on canvas mode and masking, so I'm not gonna go into it right now. Let's reset and get out of the mask setting. Since I generated this image in Sogni XL, it generated a 1024 by 1024 image, but by upscaling, I can change it all the way up to a, let's change, let's do anime since we already have kind of a cartoony one, which will take it up to 2048 by 2048, which it tells you right here. You can also see the resolution on the bottom right there, which we can zoom into. And now we can see that we have a really high resolution version of our owl. Zoom back out. And if you want to, you can always un-upscale your image just by clicking upscale again, and it'll take you back to the original one. 
We've got options to rotate our image and flip our image here. You can add it to gallery as I've been doing here. We've got our share button, which is pretty straightforward if you wanted to send it to somebody. And then we have our option to save it to our computer. Now let's open up our gallery. And there are a handful of things I wanna show you with this. Here we can see all of the images that I've generated and added to the gallery. By default, they're sorted by date. So the most recent generations first, we can also sort them by seed or by prompt. And you can choose whether to have them ascending or descending. Now let's go back to date and you'll see that some of these have little icons next to them, which shows that this is a group of them. And if you want to create a group, all you have to do is just click and drag one into another one. But if you have many that you want to group, you can click these three dots, select and group, choose the ones that you want in a group and then create a group. And now if I open it up, I'll just see these four owl images. Let's exit the group. The search bar is really handy because everything is saved by prompt that we can search for specific things that we generated. So if I search for dirt bike, we'll see the two groups of different dirt bike images that I've created. And you can do all these awesome anime dirt bike images that I made. <laughs> all right, let's exit the group. And then the last bit of this is that we have a couple options to filter things. So you can filter by groups only. So this is only gonna show me groups of images. We can see images only which is going to filter out any videos that I've created or animations from the animation panel. The play button is going to show you any animations that you've saved to the gallery. I haven't saved any animations to the gallery, so there's nothing here. And then the last thing I want to show you is if there's an image that you really like, you can go ahead and heart it, which is going to be more than just saving it to the gallery. And then if you click the heart and exit this group, you can see all of the different images that have been hearted. And those are the basics of navigating Sogni. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the app, there's a link in the description. It's free, so go get it, play around with the things that we did, and then I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.